What I have here is a quick little example. In the body of this page, what I'm doing is I'm creating a new object called in1. It's based on a class that I've written called the number class. Here I set the value for my object that's stored in my variable in1, and then I echo out in1 as a string. When I actually pull that up in the browser, this is the way that it actually looks. The output of the toString method of my object is the number is 9. 9 is the value that I set to be the value of that number here when I used my set value method. So I'm really just doing these three little lines there. Up at the top of this file is where I actually have my number class. You can see that here in the number class, each number has a private value data member, a private value variable that it has stored inside each object. I have a little constructor. The constructor can be passed a number. That number is then passed on to the set value method for that particular object. The set value method itself can receive a value and will then take that value and actually store it in this object's value variable. And then I have the toString method for the object, which just returns a string. The number is followed by the actual number. What I want to talk about in this example is different ways of potentially handling errors that might occur. The error that I'm thinking that we might want to try to deal with here for practice is what happens if we try to put a value into our number object that isn't a number. So essentially here when the set value method is called, when I call set value, what if I pass it something that isn't a number? Well, the way it works right now is it takes whatever is passed, no matter what that might be, and stores it there in the value variable. We could go ahead and give it a try just to confirm that that's what it actually does. If I come back down to the body of my page, instead of setting a value of nine the digit, what if I said nine the word? If I go back over to my browser then and refresh, you can see it happily accepted the word even though it's not actually a number, which is what I had intended. So how could I prevent that from happening? Back up in the class itself, since the value itself is actually coming into the object through this set value method, that seems to be the logical place to do our, uh, I guess you could call it data validation. What if right there I said if is numeric and I checked the value that's in the V variable, and if it was true, then I went ahead and assigned that as the value for the object. Otherwise, maybe do nothing. With nine being the value that I'm setting, if I try that in the browser, uh, it doesn't like my is numeric function. Oh, I misspelled is numeric, didn't I? Let's go back and fix that. There we are, numeric. Now in the browser, it seems to be working fine with the value of nine. If I come back and I try to set a non-numeric value instead of the digit nine, if I again try to put in the word nine, then in the browser I end up getting a value back of zero. So fine, since the word 9, N-I-N-E, is not numeric. The if statement was not true, so we did not set that as the value for the object. The object ended up having its default value for value. What was the default value? Well, previously, when I had first created the object, I had passed the number 0 to the constructor. That number 0 that was given to the constructor was passed to set value. It was numeric, so that became sort of an initial default value for my value variable. The 9, then, was not allowed to overwrite that, the NINE was not allowed to overwrite that because that was not numeric. So that seems to work pretty okay. There is still one little problem though. I wouldn't call that completely fixed. And the problem is that I think it would be valuable, potentially when I reuse this class again in the future, if there was some way when I write this code here, if I could potentially check and make sure that that line actually worked. Now of course the object is denying the invalid value, it is preventing the invalid value from becoming a part of the object itself. But if I was using that method, calling that method again in the future, or if somebody else was using my class, there's the potential that I might want to right here have some way of being able to detect whether the set value method succeeded or whether it failed. You might imagine, for example, that if that value that was being used, that was being passed to set value was something that I got from the user, I might at that point need to be able to show the user an error message, for example, and say, hey, the number you gave me is not right. We couldn't set that number. There's different ways that this potentially could be done, this error reporting could potentially be done. One of those ways would be for me to come up and maybe echo something from my set value function. Something like after I set the value, I could echo the value was set, or I could put an else to go along with that if, where I could echo the value was not set. The problem with that is 
That then assumes that any time that I'm going to be using this number class, it would be appropriate to have these two strings specifically show up as error messages. Not only those strings specifically, but that they would be echoed very directly out to the output that's being rendered and sent to the user's browser. What if, for whatever reason, how I'm using the number class needs to have the errors displayed in some other fashion, different words, a different output? This would really lock me into only being able to use this set value method in one very, very specific way. So I would not want to echo directly here from my set value function. It limits the uses of this class too much. A general rule of thumb is that if you can in all in any way at all get away with it, don't ever echo anything from a class that you write unless that class's job is very specifically to produce output. Here, this class's job is not to produce output. This class's job is to represent a number. So this is a very inappropriate place for me to actually produce any output. So echoes are off the table. I don't want to put echoes in here. What if instead of echoes, what if I instead had the set value method return something indicating whether things worked or not? In a lot of the examples that I've worked with with you previously, what I've done is I've returned Boolean values, returned true or false type values to indicate whether a function succeeded or failed and what it was it was meant to do. So here, for example, I could call set value, and if set value succeeds in setting a correct value, then I could return true. If we don't set a correct value, Value, then I return false. How that would be meant to be used is that I could then use that true or false value down here to determine whether set value succeeded or not. So I could do something like call my set value function as part of an if statement, where I could say if the value is set properly, then maybe we show the output. If the value wasn't set properly, then here in this particular little bit of code, this would be a much more appropriate place for me to actually produce some type of output telling the user something went wrong. So maybe what I could do is I could say echo the value was not valid, just as an example. Let's give that a try and see how that works. If I jump back over to the browser and hit refresh, sure enough, it, sure enough, it shows up and says the value was not valid. If I go back to using an actual valid value, the digit 9, then it works, the value is assigned, and everything seems just fine. So that seems to be working well. There is, though, still one issue. Again, I don't know that we can just stop at that point and call it done. The little issue that I would say that we still have is what if I try to set an invalid value through the constructor? What if I tried doing something like this, setting 0, Z-E-R-O, as the value in the constructor? Could I detect after that constructor whether the value was valid or not? If we come back up and look in the class, we can kind of trace our way through it. What we see is that if I try and take a value and I pass it to the constructor, it goes into this num variable. The value of the num variable is what then gets passed to set value. So if we pass zero, the word zero, over to set value, it will be seen that it's not numeric and will return false. So up to that point, everything seems like it would work correctly, the way it was a minute ago when I was calling set value directly. But here's where things again sort to fall apart. If I return false from set value and set value was called from the constructor, then that just means that the constructor has now been told that the value wasn't set. Well, what's the constructor supposed to do about that? The constructor itself, still being a part of this class, is not somewhere where I would want to echo an error message. Instead, it's almost like I would like to return that false value back from the constructor again. The problem is you can't return a value from a constructor in a PHP class. The constructor for an object always returns the object itself. You can't return anything else. So even though this true-false system worked okay with set value, when set value is called directly, it doesn't work at all for me when I'm calling set value from the constructor. There's no way when I first instantiate a new object like I'm doing here to be able to, de to detect if that initial value that I pass to the constructor is valid or not. So what we need here is we need something fancier, you might say, a new way of being able to handle these kinds of errors. What this new way of being able to handle errors is, is a new thing that we haven't talked about before called exceptions. 
technically in PHP, what an exception is, is that it is a special type of object. The reason they're called exceptions is that these exception objects are supposed to be generated, are supposed to represent exceptional circumstances that your program has run into. So we're talking about a circumstance that you've run into the program that's exceptional, something that is out of the ordinary, typically meaning something that has not gone right. So we could say passing an invalid value to the constructor is an exceptional situation. Passing an invalid value to the set value method is an exceptional situation. Those are situations where what I could potentially do is generate exception objects as a way of indicating that something has gone wrong. Let's kind of go back and talk about how that would be done. Let me reset this code back to something like what I had before and we will walk through it. There we are, back to basically what we had a little while ago, except that I still have this invalid value up here. Let me go ahead and set that back to zero as well. The way that exceptions work in PHP is that we have the ability whenever we want to be able to generate new objects from a built-in class. The built-in class in PHP is called the exception class. It's a class that's there in PHP. It's always available. We can use it anytime we want. The way the exception class works is that anytime we want to create a new exception object, we can do that by using the new keyword, just like when we create any type of object. And when we do create a new exception object, we need to provide it with two pieces of information. The first piece of information we need to give it is an error message, which will be stored inside the exception object itself. So I could just put in a message, for example, here that this is a test exception. There we are. Second piece of information that you need to pass an exception is then an error number. These error numbers are uh, basically entirely up to you. You can make them whatever you want them to be. I could, for example, just say here that the error number is one. What those error numbers essentially are for is to help us track these exceptions later. If we have multiple exceptions coming from different places in our program that maybe all have the same message, we can still put different numbers in them, and the numbers could then let us figure out which exception it was that actually was triggered if we're trying to debug our program. So this is how we actually create an exception object. As far as creating it goes, it's not that much different than any other object. But what's interesting about it is the way that we actually deal with it. There's a new keyword in PHP called the throw keyword. If I say throw a new exception, what will actually happen is PHP will create the new exception object, will instantiate it like any other object, but the throw keyword then tells PHP to immediately do not pass go, do not collect $200 immediately, try to find a way to deal with this exception. PHP at that point, the server will start looking through our code, different places that we'll talk about here in a minute, trying to find some way to deal with this exception that has been thrown. When you throw an exception, you're essentially pulling a pin on a grenade, in a sense. It's like a hot potato. You've just turned it on and you've told PHP that its only priority at that point is to now deal with this new exception that you have thrown. I think throw, the idea, the implication is that we've thrown this exception to PHP and PHP now has to find some way to catch it, find some way to deal with it. If an exception is not caught, it, PHP as a result will crash your program. Let me go pull this up in the browser. That's what I actually get. At the point where I said throw the new exception, PHP tried to find a way to deal with it, could not find a way to deal with it, so it crashed my program and said fatal error, uncaught exception, exception. Here's my error message. So all the details are there. It even here in the middle part, which is called a stack trace, tells me where it tried to find a solution to that particular exception, where it tried to find some code to deal with it. In this case, it tells me it looked on line 44 of my main, which basically means the uh, main part of my program, not in any particular function or object. If there had been any code that came after that, if I, for example, put echo test after I threw my exception, you see that the echo test does not execute. As soon as PHP has an exception that has been thrown, basically one of these hot potatoes that it has to deal with, it will execute no other code other than code that's specifically meant to deal with that exception. 
So how do we have PHP actually deal with the exception? Well, there's a new control structure that we use called a try-catch. The way a try-catch works is it takes this basic form. It starts off with the keyword try, followed by a block, a set of curly braces. Inside that try is where we then put whatever code it is that may generate an exception. So here I'm just generating an exception very directly and manually. I'll just put that code inside the try section here of this try-catch. The catch section that then comes here after the try, there can be one of these or there can be many different catches if we happen to need them. The catch keyword itself has a set of parentheses after it and inside the parentheses what we do is we say what it is it's supposed to be handling. So here I could for example say that this catch is meant to handle an exception. I'm saying exception here, making it exactly the same as the kind of object that has been thrown. I can even give it a variable here, and that variable will then automatically be filled with the object itself, the actual exception object. Inside the curly braces, the block that follows the catch is where I'm then supposed to put code that will deal with the problem, code that will put the program back into a working state again so that it can then keep running and hopefully everything will work just fine. Maybe what I'll do for right now is I'll put in echo the problem has been solved that should do the trick and maybe also after the catch I'm gonna put echo test in back there let's jump back over to the browser now refresh this and see how it goes oops it looks like I missed a quote somewhere possibly line 48 what am I forgetting there oh did I forget the dollar sign in front of my variable let me put the dollar sign in front of my E variable there, back over to the browser, refresh, and there. Now things are working the way they should. You can see that what I got was the number is 9, just like I've been getting pretty much all along, except when I was forgetting dollar signs. It then tells me the problem has been solved, and you see the word test in there. So what actually happened in this particular case is all the code from line 38 through 42 here executed pretty much like normal. But then when we got down to line 46 inside my try block, we generated a new exception. Once that new exception was thrown, like I said before, PHP's one job then became find a way to deal with it. Well, in this particular case, the problem, the exception was thrown inside a try. So the very first place PHP will look for a solution to that is in the attached catch statements. So here there was a catch statement that went along with that try. PHP checked that catch and saw that it was meant to handle exception, basically objects of the exception class. So what PHP did to handle the problem was that it took the problem that was generated, the exception object, it put it into my variable E here, it then executed the catch statement, and at that point PHP considered the problem to have been handled, considered the problem to have been solved. So when it ran my catch statement, it of course printed out the problem has been solved. Then, because there was no longer a hot potato in play, there was no longer an exception that PHP was trying to find a solution for, PHP went right back to executing code like normal. So it picked up here at the catch, and then just went on running from there, which means the next thing it got to was my echo statement that said test. So there you go. That's the basic way that exceptions get thrown and how they can then be caught and handled. Well, what in the world good does that actually do us? Well, let's move this into a slightly more realistic context. I'm going to get rid of this test code that I've put here and let's go back up to our number object again. The problem that I actually had here was that I had a problem that was occurring in the set value method and I wanted to be able to detect if that problem had occurred both when I call the set value method directly and when I call it indirectly through the constructor. Well, let's go actually throw an exception in response to there being a problem and see how this can be handled. I'm going to come back up to my set value method here, and what I'm going to do is instead of returning true or false, what I will do is any time we find that there was a problem, whenever we couldn't assign the number because the number was not numeric, what I'm going to do there is I'm going to tell PHP to throw a new exception. And I'm going to set my error message to cannot set non-numeric value. And maybe I'll append in the value that we're trying to set right there. 
and I'll just say that this is error message one. That's just the general code that I'm gonna give it. All right, so what happens now? If I throw an exception here in response to there being a problem with setting a new value in my number object, how does that help me? Does it mean that I now have to put a try catch in right here? And then what do I do in the try catch to try to handle the problem? Return true or false? Doesn't seem like that really gets me anywhere, does it? Well. There's a neat little trick, there's a neat little aspect of these exceptions that I haven't mentioned to you before, and that's that if an exception is thrown inside a function, the first place PHP will look for a way to handle that problem is in the function itself. But if PHP then doesn't find a way to handle the exception there, it will then return back to where that exception is called from as an, in an attempt to try to find other code that maybe could help with the problem. Let's kind of look at how that works. Here, when I'm setting a legitimate value, a valid value for my value, 9, over in the browser everything seems to be perfectly normal. If I set an invalid value, n-i-n-e, then what happens then is my exception gets thrown. So here's what PHP comes back and tells me. We have an uncaught exception, exception with message cannot set non-numeric value 9, n-i-n-e. And then here's the interesting part, the middle part of the error message here. In what's called the stack trace, PHP tells me everywhere that it looked to try to find a way to handle this problem. It tells me, for starters, that it looked on line 13. Well, in my code, line 13 is where the exception itself came from. So PHP's saying, I started off here on line 13 looking for a way to handle the problem. What's interesting, though, is that when it didn't find a way to handle the problem there, essentially when it didn't find a try-catch there, it then went on and it checked in the next location which was where that function was called from, line 39. And here's the actual line that called the function itself. So line 39 here. So PHP saying this is the second place that I looked to try to find a try-catch to deal with the exception. After it looked here, it wasn't able to find any other code to look for. There were no other levels, if you want to think of it that way, to this program. So it was at that point that PHP gave up and crashed our script. But what it tells me is that if I throw an exception here inside the function, I don't have to catch the exception there. I can catch the exception where the function was called from. So I could, for example, put a try catch in here put my set value method call, function call, there inside a try catch. Let me put in the catch part. I'll tell it it's going to catch an exception, which I'll call $E with a dollar sign this time. And I'll essentially say if the exception gets caught, maybe what we could do is we could call the set value function again, and we'll set a value of, let's say, negative 1. That's going to be my way of returning the object to a consistent state, a state where I know that it has some actual numeric value in it. If I go and try and run that in the browser now, no more exception code. Instead, it comes back and tells me the number is a negative 1. So let's step through and see what actually happened there. I started off by creating my number, no problem at that point. Then inside the try, I called set value with an invalid numeric value. So I called set value, passed it n-i-n-e, n-i-n-e is in the dollar $v variable. We found that the dollar $v variable is not numeric, so we threw an exception. As soon as we threw that exception, we went into PHP's special error handling, special exception handling mode, where PHP started ignoring the regular flow of the code and instead immediately looked for a way to handle this exception. So it started off by looking here, where the exception occurred, but there was no try-catch there. So PHP then returned back to where this code was called from, came back down here to what's now line 40, where I actually called the set value function. Here it did find a try-catch. It looked at the catch, it saw that yes, it is meant to handle the type of exception that I generated here, just a general exception. So it then executed the code that went with that catch. It executed that code, we set a negative one as the value for our number, and at that point PHP considered the problem to be solved, so it went on running like normal. So we printed out our number object with its value of negative one in it. Everything seems great. If I give my set value method a regular number, a real number, a numeric number, like nine, then the catch itself never executes. In that case, because the actual value I passed was numeric, the code that generated the exception never executed, so the catch never had to be run in order to deal with it. But when I did have a problem, like n-i-n-e is my number, in that case the catch has to run in order to deal with that problem. One extra advantage this gives us is that not only can these exceptions propagate up through levels of methods, 
up from a method the way that I was doing here, but they can actually propagate back through multiple levels of methods. That then means that if the set value method itself is called from another method, from another function, like when I call it from the constructor, this will all still work the exact same way. If I call the constructor for my class, and it calls set value, and set value generates the exception, then what will happen is PHP will start where the exception is generated, looking for a catch. If it doesn't find it there, it will then, in going back to where set value is called from, return back to the constructor, where the constructor then has the opportunity to handle the exception if we want it to. So we could actually put a try catch in right there. If it doesn't find a way to handle the exception at that point, what it then does is it returns back to where the constructor is called from. So unlike when I was returning the boolean values, the true or false, these exceptions can propagate back through multiple levels of method calls much easier. Let's for example take this line where I am creating my new number object and I am going to copy it. I'm going to leave the end part, the declaration of the end variable, maybe I'll just set it to zero right there. I'm going to leave that outside the try catch but I'm going to take the actual instantiation of the number object and put it inside. I'm going to comment out the set value method call. I don't want to mess with that right now. Instead, what I want to do is cause an exception directly through the constructor. So through the constructor, I'm going to pass it a invalid value, Z-E-R-O, the word zero. That, of course, will then be handed off to set value. Set value will generate an exception. The set value method won't handle the exception, so PHP will look in the constructor. The constructor won't handle the exception, which means we'll end up right back here on this line of code again, where PHP will see that we're in a try. It'll execute the catch. The catch should then set the value to 1, to negative 1 in this case, where it will then go on and print out the object. Let's see what happens there. Not perfect, but I kind of knew it wasn't going to be. It comes back and it tells me call to member function set value on a non-object on line 43. That line 43 is actually in my catch. What actually happened there? Well, we were calling the constructor to create a new object for number, but instead of creating the new object, we created an exception instead. So the object or the variable n1 only had a zero in it, not an actual number object. When we tried to call set value for it at that point, you can't call set value on the number zero. We need a number object to do that. So what we could do potentially is we could say if $n1 is equal to zero inside the catch, then maybe what we want to do at that point is create a new object that we know is safe and valid. I could say create a new number with the uh, value of negative 1 in it. Negative 1 meaning um, no value set was kind of the way I was using it before. So we could do something sort of along those lines. In the browser now you can see again the exception is being generated but it's also now being handled by my catch statement. So that seems to kind of do the trick. Overall these exceptions provide sort of another interesting and definitely a little bit more complex way of us being able to handle errors than simply returning true or false values. Most of the time you can get by in PHP pretty handily without ever having to bother much with these exceptions, or at least dealing with them yourself. They're of course there and you can use them if you'd like them, but they're not typically considered to be an extremely crucial or a centric part of the way that PHP operates. If you do like to use exceptions, then by all means you can. You might even look up the fact that in PHP you can create your own custom types of exceptions. So instead of us always using just generic exceptions, the way I've been here, we could create very specific types of exceptions for specific situations if we happen to want to. So even though we don't have to deal with exceptions in PHP, I think it is a good skill to know, if for no other reason than, a lot, than that a lot of new libraries that are being created for PHP sometimes handle their error handling through the use of exceptions. It's useful to understand what they are and how to actually deal with them. Overall, the best course of action is that if a problem can be handled simply and effectively with just an if-else statement, then that's still the way to go. If-else statements are much more optimized, much faster, and definitely a lot uh, simpler to be able to deal with than exceptions are. But when you do truly have exceptional situations that can't be dealt with in, in any simpler or easier way, exceptions can be your best friend.